Hello guys, welcome to Data in Nutshell. Today we are going to talk about my second video of web application series where we are going to create an attendance tracking system and in which we have created a button and I want user to click on the button and data should be sent on the back end which is a Google Sheets. So the user will click on the button like this. For example, I'm clicking it five times. One, two, three, four, five and you will see that you will get data like this. So for example, if this attendance system is deployed, your team can just click the button and mark their attendance. And we are going to learn how we can send data from our web applications to our Google Sheets with the help of a button. So let's begin. So I'm going to explain you the code. There are two pages of the code, okay, which is helping the web application. So this, is code.js where my main function is written and this is the HTML page, right? You can go and learn about what is this all about in my part one video of the web application. So we are going to talk about this function here and in the HTML page, this one, we are going to talk about all these lines and what are their meanings. What exactly you have to change in the code so that you can just use it for your purpose, right? So if I go to code.js, so what I've done, I have created this do get lines, right? Which is helping to create the web application. And this function, I have created a transfer function. You can name it anything, a variable which is passing the information into this transfer. So that means this function will be called inside this HTML page, right? So I'm creating this so that once the user will click on the button, that information, right? The user's information, the email ID, the timestamp or anything will come in this particular variable. And this will be passed in this code. And with the help of these three lines, this information will be pasted here like this. Okay, so this part is really very easy, right? The main part, which is how to connect your code.js, right? This function with HTML code. So we are going to look into this. So if you're not aware, I'm just going to explain you the breakup of the HTML code. One is a style section. Okay, style means anything look and feel will be described here. Anything which contains the body, how it is looking, the headlines or anything, it will come in the body section. And if there is any script, for example, in our case, we have a transfer function, right, to be linked. So that will be in this section. So there are three sections altogether. So if I go to my code, HTML code, so you can see these are predefined lines, right? When you create an HTML file like this, for example, I'm just going to show you with the help of this plus button, you will go and click it, click on HTML. It will give you a file like this. Okay. So you can see that these lines are already there, right? So we don't have to write these lines. We are going to write our code in between this body. Okay. So just let's compare this in my code. So we know that in this file, the, the lines are basically till body, right? So let's go and compare it. I have these lines, but where is the body? Okay, body is here, right? Then the start of the body is here. So that means I have added these lines in between, right? These lines, the style section. So style section means I'm saying that this is my style parameters, any button, okay? Any button which is in these lines, okay, will be will be basically will be defined by these variables. The background color is this border, none color, white padding will be this text alignment will be center decoration is none inline block. What is the font size? What is the margin and what is the pointer? You can go and learn about these parameters, but these are the very basic ones. move any money, anything you don't want, but it will work it as well. So I have tried to keep the code as simple as possible. So, so that for the new users, it will be very easy to learn. So this is a style section, which is defining the properties of the button. Okay. Now our head is starting from here. Then our body is starting from here. Now I have written 
H1 attendance tracking system. If I go to the web application, attendance system. So this is the H1. H1 means main headline, right? Then I have given these two uh, tags BR. That is a break. That means there will be two space after this line. Okay, this is a break, break line. So that's why there are two space in between. You can see. Okay. After that, I have created a button. Okay. Earlier I defined the button properties, but I am creating the button in this line. So what I'm writing button tag ID attendance, then I am defining a class for this button so that I can access it in my future codes. Then I am saying if the button is on click, right? If somebody clicks on the button, then what happens? Then this function will run. This means this function will run and the function name is run. Okay. And what will be written on the button? It will be mark attendance. You can see mark attendance. Okay. If I go back to the code, I am closing the button like this. So this line creates the button, gives some ID class and gives a name of a which is going to be uh, which is going to be run once the button is clicked okay now my part is done right I only have a button here in the web application if you can see only a button one headline and one button that's it nothing else so that's why my main body is complete now I'm going to link this run button and whenever there is a script involved a function is involved in the HTML code then we have to give a script. So this is this is also a script. If you can see this is also a script, right? But any script which is written in the HTML code, it will be inside these two tags script and forward slash script. So anything in between this, this HTML code knows that it has to like it has to take it as a script and will try to figure out what will happen. Okay, so once it will read that this is a script, okay, it will come to the next line and it will say text equals to present. So what is going on? If I go to the back end, you can see in column B, I'm getting present, right? If anyone clicks on the button, it will mark it as present. It will like paste the word present here. So that's why I have created a variable where present word will be saved in the text variable. Okay, now this is very important. Now what is happening? I am creating a function run, which was here. Okay, I'm creating a function here and I'm writing this line. What is this? This is Google dot script dot run dot transfer. And in brackets, I'm putting text. This is a text. So present will go inside this. And this is a function that we already know that we have created in code.js here. See, the name is exactly same, right? So now this script knows that with uh, that a transfer function is present and this function should be run after passing this value, present value inside this function. Okay. And why this is running? This is running because a run function we have called and we have named the run function here as is. So when whenever the user clicks on the mark, uh, mark attendance button, this function will run. Then with the, with the help of this line, right, we are going to run the transfer function, which is described in code.js. Now it is done and I'm just closing the body and the HTML code. So in this particular code, we have just given attendance. Uh, we have just given the headline. We have created a button. We have created a function. Okay. And link that function with this button like this. And these three words are very important. Google dot script dot run. Whenever you want to link the HTML code with the code dot GS, then you have to use this. Let's go to my code. This is a function. What I'm saying here is run this function. Okay. The HTML code ran this function and it passes the uh, variable value, which is known as present. Okay. You can just uh, remove this. This is a logger statement. Cool. Now what I'm saying, I'm saying I've created a variable SS in which I'm calling the sheet. Sheet means this sheet, the URL of this particular Google sheet. 
I'll go and I'll replace this. Okay, if you want to use this code, you just go and use replace the Google Sheet URL here. Cool. Then I've created a tab variable where I'm calling the tab name. This is the tab name web app backend. Okay, I'll go here. I'll just write the tab name here. That means I have entered the tab. Now what I'm doing, I am saying the last row, I'm deciding the last row. Last row is in this tab, in this web app backend tab, go to the last row and just add one so that I can get the, the row in which we want to paste the new data. Okay. So for example, if I delete this data, if this is the first entry, which is going to come. So I'm saying, I'm saying go and calculate the last row. Last row will be the uh, row one. But now I want to enter the new data in the row two. So that's why I've added plus one here. Okay. So it will be row two. Then I've created a date variable in which with the help of these uh, function new date brackets, it will save the today's current date and time in this variable. And I've created an email uh, variable as well, where with the help of session, I am getting the active user and getting the email of that active user saved in this email variable. Once email date, everything is with us. I'm just using this, these three lines tab dot get range a b c the column names, these columns name a b c. Okay. I have to paste in a two b two and c two. So I'm coming here a b c. And the last row, last row is one plus one, that is two. That means A2, B2, C2. And I'm setting the value date, the word present and the email address. And with the help of this, you just click this and the data will be sent to your Google Sheet. This is how you create a button in a web app. And in my next video, we are going to expand our attendance tracking system and you are going to learn a lot. Just remember, keep on learning. As we all know what is happening in Twitter nowadays, so you need to upgrade your skills. All the best. Thank you.